What's up YouTube, Coach Dan Blewett here. So today I wanna to talk about Tommy John surgery and one of the really hard components of the surgery itself. So obviously I've been through Tommy John two times. If you haven't seen, I have a Chronicles playlist. My second surgery, I chronicled it, so I did a video every week on my progress. Lots of players have followed that over the years, and I'm glad that it's still a resource out there because I didn't have anything to follow. I didn't really have anything to compare myself to when I was going through my first surgery, really, or my second surgery, so I decided, like, hey, I'm doing this again. Let's put some kind of record out there so people can benefit from it. So I work with players, I do like remote training and we do consulting and I'm sort of like a mentor, like a, a extra coach, a big brother for a lot of players who are going through injuries. And so one of my guys, uh, he's out there in the Midwest and he's been struggling with his rehab, not from Tommy John, but from the, uh, the partial UCL brace. Um, so basically if you have a partial tear and then they think they can maybe avoid the full Tommy John surgery, they can do uh, this, reconstructive, this reconstructive brace surgery. So they actually repair the ligament and they kind of reinforce it. So that surgery is supposed to be a lot shorter, but it's not necessarily easier. And this is what a lot of players are finding that we you know you hear about, you know, Steven Strasburg, all these big leaguers that just come back like clockwork, 12 months, they're back in the game, just dominating people. That's really the exception, not the norm. And it's a hard thing to come back from. This is not just Tommy John either. It's shoulder surgery, it's ACL reconstruction. All these surgeries have a lot of ups and downs and they can be very difficult mentally to get back from because one day you feel great, the other day you feel terrible. There's no rhyme or reason why you feel good one day and bad the next. So I wanna share a quick text exchange between him and I because it's basically the perfect example of what players go through in Tommy John surgery and, or really just any arm surgery rehab and why it's so hard. So he said, just through 76 again, feel like crap. I said, define crap. He said, just mad and kind of sad. I wanted to get 77 or 78. I'll be all right. I just need to release my emotions. And what I responded was, I said, well, you got to stay even keeled. Do your best to think to tomorrow. You didn't go backward, did you? Which he didn't. You repeated your best performance. And then basically I texted him, and I'll put these up here uh, on, on the video screen here. You repeated your best performance. You repeated your best performance. You repeated your best performance. So I kind of forced him to say that back to me because at the end of the day, we want to just get back to where we were, right? When I blew out my arm, I threw 90 both times. I threw 90 plus the second time. So the first day back and the first couple days, it's, it's hard to break 73. And I'm like 20 miles per hour away from my own uh, you know, re, you know, like reset point. And I think, how am I ever gonna get back there? I'm gassed, it's so hard throwing 73 miles per hour. And for him as, as around an 80 mile per hour guy, he was struggling at 70 miles per hour last week, which I also had to remind him of, that he's made a lot of progress in a week. So he kind of broke through after throwing like 70 miles per hour and being really upset about it. And then a week later, he's throwing 76. I'm like, that's great. He was feeling better, awesome. Of course, then again, a couple of days later, he's throwing again and he can't break 76 this time because he put this expectation in his mind, in his head, that I've got to make progress every single time. But one of the big things is, imagine you're lifting weights and you, and you do a, a, a PR, a personal best, right? A personal record and you've never lifted 400 pounds before and you squat 400. Now, before you, your body's gonna let you squat 405, what do you think you're gonna have to do? You're gonna have to squat 400 many more times to build the strength to then go a little bit above it, right? You barely got there. It's like pulling yourself up a wall. You barely got there. You're gonna need to develop more strength to get to the next little milestone. So that happened numerous times in my own recovery. It's already happened in his recovery. But yeah, he hit 76. So the next time he wants to hit 77, then he wants to hit 78. We get greedy, but you can't make progress every single time out. You just can't. Because if you added a mile per hour every throwing session, you'd be throwing 115 within like two months, right? And so the big thing with an arm injury or a knee injury or any kind of major injury where you have to go under the knife is that there's gonna be this undulating, this wave pattern where you feel great, you feel terrible. There's a good reason you feel bad because maybe you did too much or then there's no reason that you feel terrible. It just, it's very, and I've talked about this in other videos, but it's worth re reiterating. It's really, really hard to figure out why the heck does my arm hurt 
when I didn't do anything normal, I, I didn't do anything weird, I didn't do anything excessive, that's typically what happens. Like you do something new and it kind of reacts, right? You do a, like a heavier bench press for the first day or with dumbbells or you do push-ups for the first time and your arm gets kind of sore because you're doing new things. You're stressing it in a new way. And when your arm reacts to that stuff, it makes sense. It's like, yeah, I did something new. I threw off the mound for the first time, so my arm's really sore. That's great. But when you are doing the same thing you've been doing for months and it just feels terrible today for no good reason, that's when it gets really frustrating. But you have to take these little battles as they come because mentally it's really hard and it's really defeating if you put these big milestones every time you do the next thing, you, throw, you have your next throwing workout, your next running, lifting workout, whatever it is. So in this case, I just want him to reframe the situation that it was, yeah, you didn't break through and hit another new personal record, but you repeated your best performance. You repeated it another time. And there's something to be said for that because again, before he's gonna break through and hit 77, then 78, then 80, then 82, then 85, he's gonna have to hit 76 a bunch of times. And it's the same thing when I was at the tail end of my surgery. I hit 90 for the first time once, right? But I had to throw 92 every single pitch in a game to be back, to be really back. And so hitting 90's, 90 once is great, but before I'm gonna hit 92 every single time, I've got to hit 90 every single time, right? So if you hit 90 once, next time out you hit 95 times, that's great, your body's feeling that it's easier to hit 90, right? Just like if you squatted 400 pounds once, if then you could squat 400 pounds five times, it's I mean, like that's strength training 101, that you're stronger now. You could probably squat 410 or 420 because you can squat 400 for a five rep, right? It's actually higher than that. So it's just important to keep all this in, in perspective and if you're a parent, your kid might get injured one day and they might go through this. And it's the, the hardest thing is when you just can't figure out why they feel good and why they feel bad. That's what's really, really frustrating. It's really demoralizing where you feel like you're doing everything right, taking multiple steps forward and then you have to take a giant leap backwards. And there's nothing to do about it except trying to keep putting one foot in front of the other, stay positive, reframe the situation. So again, he was upset he didn't set a new record, but he did repeat his best performance and it was probably easier the second time. So hopefully this video gives you a little perspective. Hopefully you're healthy listening to this. Hopefully you're a parent who has an un uninjured healthy athlete, but one day you might be faced with this and think back that it's really a mentally tough process and the ups and downs are really would eat away at you. If it was linear, if it's always just like, you know, every day I'm doing a little bit better or I'm throwing a little harder or whatever it is, Things are easy that way, but that's not how life is, right? Everything's cruising along. You just bought a new house, you just bought a new car, and then something happens, right? Something tragic. That's just like how life is. It's always this wave of ups and downs. So thanks for watching. I hope this helped you. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. My goal is always to put out new videos that help athletes, that help parents, that help their families. And this is a tough one. Injuries are tough, recoveries are tough. And when it's not as cut and dry as you feel like it is on TV, like you see the big league guys, oh, I got Tommy John, I'm back. Everything was great. And then it's not that way for you, that it's hard for you. It's just really tough to deal with sometimes. So leave me a comment, leave me a suggestion for a future video, and I'll see you here in the next one.